Oh, I hear some beautiful um, sounds in the background of nature. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna mute so we could do this recording. So thank you all again for coming. Um, this is our uh, first Conscious Feminine Medicine healing transmission that I'm going to be doing on Fridays for this time of great change. Um, we, all, we all know, I mean, uh, we're all feeling it, this time of, of great change that is not just, you know, obviously, on a personal level, we're going through whatever we're going through and adjusting and, and kind of moving moment to moment. And there's a lot to be said about that. But also on a global level, we're really facing um, a huge initiation, which I talked a little bit about on my um, other video on YouTube. So I'm not gonna kind of go into that as much again but we will touch on that because I want to really bring it down and bring it home into the personal and give, um, have an opportunity here to unravel some of what we are feeling and really, you know, allow this to be a more of a personal transformation for each person. Um, so having said that, I want to, I want to start with just, um, you know, those of you that are familiar with my work, uh, you know, I just want to start with kind of bringing yourself into presence and bringing yourself really in connection um, with yourself, with your body, with your heart, with your soul. So we want to kind of come inward. And yes, we're all here in a group, in a circle, and you're all listening to me. However, I want, um, I want your focus to be within so that you could start to um, really be aware of what's moving through you at any moment. Um, so I'd like to start with a poem. This is a poem that I wrote um, probably, this one was last year. So just, if you can, you just uh, take a moment and close your eyes and just listen and see where that, you know, where that hits, where you resonate with it. She is here. She is here. She is whispering in the ears of all of those that have been poised at the edge of her ocean, awaiting this moment. She is the flame that hides in every spiritual path, lighting the way to the one that is in all. The veils of the patriarchal culture has kept her hidden and has destroyed her body in our minds. Perhaps they felt they could keep her repressed for the long haul, but she hides in plain sight, in the warm cup of tea, in the mother's embrace, in the stranger's smile. Thousands of women have died in her name, voicing her wisdom and offering her love. But we wait no longer. We must move through the collective feminine wounds and realize we are poised at the precipice, ready to break through the terror that has bound us. We dive into her and she empowers us. We surrender the fear, the shame, the isolation, the abandonment, and the powerlessness, all mental constructs of the past. We awaken to her joy, her power, her courage, and her wild ecstatic presence within us. It is time, the revolution of the feminine has begun. She is coming through your heart, through your soul, and through your sacred body. She frees you from the constraints of the past into the bliss of the present. Do you dare to listen and awaken to her magic? And so just let yourselves receive that. Let yourselves receive that. And, um, 
as I mentioned before, we're going to do, um, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, have a conversation or more of a reflection and talk about um, some reflections of this time. And then we're gonna go into an embodied process. So I hope that um, you all have uh, your journals near and maybe some essential oils, not necessary, but always welcomed. So I'm just looking over some of my notes because there's so much that I want to say and so much that I want to share that um, I have to condense it. I will have to condense it. Um, so being in this time of intensity that we're all experiencing, we do notice that the whole world is on the same path. Um, on the outer, we're, that we're all dealing with this um, threat, if you may. And one of the common denominators is fear. And there's a lot to say about that. And we're going to open into that in a little bit. Um, but it is the time, I want us to also have an understanding that in this global initiation that we're all going, that we're all going through, there is, there is um, a gift in a way. There's many gifts. And in order to be able to receive the gift, we have to start um, seeing it from a whole different perspective. So one of those perspectives is to really understand that it is an initiation, that it is an initiation on a deeper level and that the way that we move through the initiation is by activating some of these feminine principles because at the core of this global initiation, um, it's really about bringing back online these feminine principles that have been repressed, rejected for thousands of years. So, we can also see this as, um, as a process of a new era of feminine sovereignty. And what I mean by that is really it's an era where we are, through the events that are happening, if we choose to, we can actually allow ourselves to, to go into deep transformation and discover, access, anchor in our true essence, our true divinity, our divine nature, which is um, what I call that feminine aspect, which is our soul. And so this feminine sovereignty, what I really, I want to really talk about that a little bit, because this feminine sovereignty is really about realizing that we carry we are this true nature this true essence and in being that and in being that we have access to the wisdom the ancient wisdom the wisdom of the world the wisdom of that divine intelligence because we are that we are that and we have access to that and so that's where our sovereignty comes in. So it's not about necessarily um, turning to the outer and trying to figure out what is right for us, what is right for our heart, what is right for our soul, what is right, what is right decision in any moment. It is about actually turning within and accessing that deep wisdom, that deep connection that we've been severed to severed from for eons and reestablishing that trust with the divine intelligence within us. So we have to first recognize ourselves as sacred beings, you know, having this experience in form in, in our bodies. And then secondly, we have to be able to, okay, so how do we really trust that? How do we access that in the middle of chaos, in the middle of, what seems to be, um, or what is fear and terror, or fear of the unknown, or fear of 
of not um, fear of our lives, fear of death, you know, so how do we access that? And so that's the whole point of conscious feminine medicine. It's really a healing system of how we can access this deep truth within us and anchor in that and feel the safety, the peace, the joy, because from that, from that is how we can feel those things we call love, we call peace, we feel safety, um, the safety, and even feel the trust and receive the wisdom. So the wisdom, it's not outside of us. And yes, in a time of, of this crisis, I, I, I want to say, you know, there's a, we have to also, you know, do the right things on the outer. We have to also be cautious and, um, and heed some of the warnings, which is also another level of discernment, which we're not going to cover today. But what we want to make sure that we kind of navigate around and not um, hold on to is the fear. We don't want to get caught in the veil of fear because then that doesn't allow us to move into the deeper wisdom that we all carry. And truly what we are all looking for is safety and love and peace. And we all want to live in that. And how can we do that when we're all, you know, surrounded by so much fear? And I will say, um, and I always say this, that fear is the gateway. So fear makes us confront where we're in separation and where we're not able to access. It shows us exactly where we're in um, living from a place of disconnection. And it comes up so that we can actually move through it and, and, and actually anchor in a greater consciousness and a greater level of consciousness. So fear is actually a teacher in many ways. Now we have to choose to move through it. We have to choose to um, know that it's not just there so that we can, um, you know, it's not predictive. You know, many of us have this old saying that uh, if, you know, if I'm fearing something and I'm focusing on it, I'm gonna create it. You know, it's not that simple. So, you know, in a lot of ways, our emotions, you know, as, as women and for men too, but um, mostly for women, we've disconnected from emotions from, because we, we're afraid of them. We're afraid that if we actually allow ourselves to feel, we might get stuck there, we might create it or it's negative. So the truth is that our emotions, this is one of the feminine principles that we're going to talk about um, today because it's really about our emotions are, are a way for our bodies to actually transform different emotional feelings that we're having in the moment that keeps us in separation. So our emotions are, are showing us again what needs to be, what needs to come up to be held in love and transmuted. And so it's important not to fear our emotions or fear, fear, fear itself. So the greatest fear there is, is fear itself um, because fear paralyzes us. And fear also, by the way, dysregulates our immune system. So in many ways, uh, we don't wanna stay stuck in the fear. We want to do something. We wanna be able to talk about it, express it, face it, and move through it. And what it does is it, it allows us to move into greater and greater levels of consciousness and greater levels of love. It actually allows us to break through when we are willing to move through our emotions and see our emotions as allies rather than um, as something that we're doing wrong or judging ourselves for them or shaming ourselves for them. So... I kind of went ahead a little bit on the um, 
emotion, you know, the feminine principle of our emotions, but we're going to cover a couple of other feminine principles that, that now we can start to um, not start because I'm sure everybody here on this call has already been doing this work to a great degree, but um, that we can bring to the forefront and really presence and really be aware of how these principles are, are, are working in our moment to moment life and how what is our relationship with these principles and then use them to our um, advantage so one more thing that i want to say is that the we just had a libra full moon and you know we're being um we're actually being uh infused with that you know, Libra is a sign also of Venus. Venus of regular, uh, rules Libra, and it's also the sign of love and beauty. One second, I'm sorry. And so with Venus in that full moon of Venus, that pink moon, we're, we're really in a time where we can start to discern our relationship. Venus is all about how we're relating to ourselves and to the outer world. And it's a moment also of choice because Libra can see all the different aspects um, and be able to, to come into right relationship. And so we have this influence now astrologically. There's a lot going on astrologically, but just this last influence of Libra is all around right action it's all about our relationship of whether we're choosing and what we're choosing so are we choosing fear or are we choosing love and this is very simplistic but in a way we can apply it to when we're making decisions um or even our state of mind at any given time so this is the first question that if you do have your journal nearby that you can actually just note um, for yourselves, you know, what am I choosing? What am I in service to, fear or love? And when we're in service to love, it might mean to confront our greatest fears, which I think is up for us and it's up, you know, globally in many ways. So can we, you know, so just jotting this down for, for reflection later on, you know, what are we in service to, fear or love? And sometimes our fear is so great that we may not be able to choose love in the moment. And so that's okay. And so we can bring love to that moment that we're in fear and that we don't know and that we can't move through it. So... That's one aspect of the moon that I wanted to, to talk about. Um, now, as we're moving into this time of global change and transformation, you know, we have, like I said earlier, the ability to really look at the feminine qualities and these feminine principles and how we're relating to them. And, uh, I want to talk a little bit about some of these principles. The first principle is, well, we already covered the, the feeling aspect, and we're going to move through a process where we can actually um, experience some of these. So the first principle, one of the principles of the feminine that we're, that is going to really help us to move through these times is the principle of our visceral matrix. So really realizing that our body, that our physical body, that our visceral body, A, is sacred, and B, that we have the ability to, um, we have the ability to actually connect with wisdom and connect with our divinity through our body, through our, through our feeling nature, through our sensing nature, it is through our body that we're able to feel our spirit. And part of the feminine is not to 
you know, think of our spirituality as something A, outside of us or something that's kind of um, static, you know, or a state that we have to reach, but more so to be, to see it as this inner essence that we are, that we, as we move inward and through our different subtle bodies, we can access. And that level of consciousness, which, which we call our essence, is the oneness, it's the unity field, it's the oneness that is also in every other form. It's the oneness that gives birth to everything. And that is also in each and every one of our cells, it's in each and every one of our organs, of our thoughts. There is nowhere that that oneness is not. There's nowhere that that essence is not. And that is our truth of who we are. That's our own divine nature. And through this feminine um, lens, we actually can then see everything as being birthed from that oneness and therefore everything holding sacredness and holiness and so it's important to start really acknowledging that within your own body and when we you know are experiencing dysfunction or illness or um, any imbalances yes we can treat it on the level of form we can treat it on the physical level with certain nutrients and certain um you know, medicines, but the true medicine is really about that connection with your essence. Um, because that disconnection creates imbalances. And so acknowledging our visceral matrix and acknowledging the sacredness of this visceral body that we feel of our form. The second, the second principle that I really want to, that I already um, kind of touched upon is of the feminine is listening and turning inward. So the idea of listening and listening deeply and listening past the emotional body, past the, you know, the, the chaos of what you might be feeling in your whole nervous system so that you can actually go into the place, ideally the place of stillness, but even before you get to that purified stillness of your being, there's many, many levels of wisdom that you can actually access. So listening and trusting that you have the ability to connect and to receive the greatest, you know, medicine for yourself, the greatest wisdom. And so listening is much more important than just about anything else that I know, because it's, it's only when you actually allow yourself to settle down and in that listening, then you can hear the messages of what you actually need. You can hear the wisdom of, and the guidance within you. And that's very important part of sovereignty because if you can't hear the guidance, then what is guiding you? You know, what, what is actually moving you? You know, is it something from the outside that we're hearing? And so we're always hearing, by the way, we're always receiving transmissions. I know we, we, we call this uh, healing transmissions today and, we're actually going to um, do that process, but other than that sacred process, we're always receiving from the outer world. And on the heart level and on the soul level, we want to ask ourselves and become aware, what are we feeding ourselves? You know, not just physical food, but what are we feeding our hearts? What are we feeding our minds? What are we feeding our soul? Because it matters. 
And we all know we live in a culture that doesn't really honor the sacred, honor the feminine, honor these principles that, that, we're, that we're bringing up here. And so can we set aside time to feed ourselves some of these principles and align with these principles because we're not going to get it on the outer. And even if we lived in a, in a culture that honored the feminine principles, um, these principles in nature are about turning within. These, this is the feminine principle about turning within. Um, so the listening is key to our being able to access the guidance and the wisdom. And a lot of times it's just listening and it's like stopping, which is really what the order has been now globally. We have to stop and, and reflect. And what we do with that time is of course up to us and not everyone is gonna go into a deep transformation um, like everyone here on this call, but we have the opportunity. I mean, it's, be, it's very obvious. We have that opportunity to do that at this time. Um, another feminine principle that I wanna talk about and, and before we go into our process is the concept of being versus doing. And being, sometimes it's challenging to the mind because in our mind, we're again, we're set in this um, masculine culture of doing and accomplishment and kind of having um, a checklist and checking all those off. And so this is how we have found our value in many ways and how we still, um, you know, reward ourselves or how we think we are worthy it's by how much we do. And of course, I'm sure all of you on this call, all of you on this call have been able to move to some degree past that and know this concept. However, can we, can we commit to this aspect of being and find value in ourselves regardless of what we do on the outer. Can we find that true value in our essence, in who we are, in our divine nature, um, absent from what we're doing, what we're accomplishing in the outer world? And so this process of being will also start to inform what we do in the outer world, because we won't have to, we won't be motivated to do by, from a place of, of fear or having to prove ourselves or, um, or of lack in any way or having to kind of gain value. Because if we notice our inherent value, then we're free to actually do in the world what actually brings us joy. We're free to do in the world perhaps what we have longed for in our hearts that we haven't even dared to step into. We're free to express ourselves from just from the place of joy rather than from the place of having to gain something from it because we have already um, satisfied that level of, of gaining, of feeling already fulfilled within us and of value. So if we feel our own value and we're able to connect to that, we don't have to then, um, we end up kind of letting go of a lot of things that we do and we can just be with ourselves. We can just be and relish in this true essence, which by the way is where we feel the love, this essence, this spiritual nature that is our our true self. This is where we can feel love, unconditional love, not from the outside. This is where we can feel all of those qualities that we that our hearts long for. We can feel true fulfillment. 
and joy and bliss and ecstasy. And, and then we can share it among other people with others. And we're just transmitting that because like I said earlier, we're always in transmission. So we're receiving from the world and we're transmitting from where we are unconsciously and consciously without even having to say a word. And so um, this process of truly recognizing our value and just being in that is really important um, to this, to the whole feminine awakening that's happening now. So, um, there's one more, <laughs> there's one more principle, which I know you have all heard. I'm going to say it anyway. It's the principle of the feminine. That's all about surrender. And that goes along with being, and that goes along with, um, what we were talking about our feelings and you know I could say a lot about surrender and surrender you know can be a kind of a challenging concept to understand from the mental level from our minds um, and the first thing I want to say is like what are we surrendering to because that's an important question and that's a question I had for a very long time <laughs> which kept me in resistance um, kept me from surrendering because I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was surrendering to, right? Because we have this whole idea of giving away our power and, you know, in, in, in psychology, we, you know, many, many of the things we learn, some of the things that we learn at, at first is all about, you know, regaining our power and how we have lost power, but it's not that kind of power. And so for me, I wanted to make sure I wasn't like surrendering just to some other power, but this is a surrender to the truth of who you are. And that might sound a little abstract, but what we're surrendering to, it's almost like when we stop fighting, because we have to realize that the one that is fighting, that the one that is in resistance, it's not our soul, it's not our spirit, it's not our essence, it's not the one that the aspect of ourselves that is in unity with everything else, that is in oneness, that knows that we live on past our physical reality, our physical form, the one that surrenders is the one that doesn't know that, the one that's in separation, right? The one that's in pain, the one that's suffering, the one that's living from these ideas and these perceptions that keep us um, separate from merging with our true essence. And that's the one that surrenders. And that's what we are surrendering into is our true essence. Because when everything else falls away, the only thing that is left is our essence, our spirit. And so this concepts of surrender is um, simple on one level, and it could be very, very challenging to our minds. Um, and in order to surrender, we have to be willing to go into this place of not knowing. We have to be willing to go um, through the fear of not knowing and um, all of the, the fears that we have will show up in that place, in that gateway. And so, but it's a beautiful concept. And when we actually become friends with this concept of surrender, it can really move us through a lot of noise in our minds and a lot of suffering in our hearts. It can really move us through that and allow us to land in our essence. So those are some of the, the qualities that I wanted to talk about in terms of the feminine principle. And um, I'd like to go into a process where we can actually um, 
or we can actually experience some of these. And the last thought that I want to leave you with before we go into the process is, you know, we just talked, we just wrote in our journals, if we have them available, like what are we in service to fear or love? And during this time of this incubation, this transformation, this time out that we're all having, um, there's really the potential for this quantum leap within our own levels of consciousness, depending on where we are and um, how we want to move forward. There's an opportunity here that is really ongoing with, with, with this whole awakening and this great change that's happening. Um, but even if we just looked at the next, you know, like the, the next few weeks, the next uh, six weeks, eight weeks, two weeks, until we kind of um, are let out of this incubation period. Um, it's not that the transformation will stop because this is, in my opinion, the beginning of seeing this great transformation in the outer world um, and clearing and purifying the levels of separation and fear, et cetera. But I want to shed some light on how, you know, perhaps to hold the inquiry in your heart of how do we want to come back out into the world? How do we want to reintegrate into the world? And if we're choosing love, which I know everyone on this call is um, trying to anyway, um, if we're choosing love, then what does that mean? How can we choose love in a greater way for our hearts and our soul? What is it that we have not been able to bring out into the world or show up as in the world? Because perhaps of fear, fear of the unknown, fear of whatever the fears are, fear of disappointment, fear of feeling unworthy, or fear of judgment, fear of rejection. How do we want to show up in our own lives and in the world? Because it's, it's up to us. We have choice. We're not victims. This is the era of sovereignty. This is about really looking at and, and, and becoming really responsible for what's happening to us, what we perceive happening to us in any given moment. And then, and then exploring that in our own heart. And then picking out and receiving the jewel from that, the gem. So it's like, what, you know, what is this fear bringing to me? What is this fear? If I move through this fear, where is it landing me? What, um, how, how is it opening up, helping me to open up to higher levels of consciousness, of love? And then once you are comfortable in moving through what we call suffering or challenges or even wounds of the past, then you can help others either, you know, by words or by counseling or by just being, being that change, right? Being that and holding that certainty within yourself. And these are the times that we're in. And, and, and you are all at the forefront listening to this. And um, in many ways, there's something in your heart, something in your soul that's bringing you um, to this place of sovereignty and authority for yourself and then for others to hold that vibration on the planet. Whether you do it through um, your work or you do it through your family, it doesn't matter. But it's all about shifting and holding that vibration so that when we hear all of this vibration of fear coming at us, we can hold a different vibration of love. 
and of truth. And that doesn't mean we won't feel fear because we have to process our fear. It doesn't mean we won't feel other feelings, but we can feel other feelings and ride that wave and land in the love, in the truth, knowing that anything that's, that's showing up for us, any feelings, any uncomfortableness, any challenges, is really the tool, the teacher, to bring us into a higher level of consciousness or a deeper level of consciousness or a deeper level of our light. So let's do our process. I think um, I've spoken enough. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, uh, let's see. I'm gonna pause. pause. Let me record this. Allow yourself to focus on your breath and relax. And I want you to feel your breath going down all the way into your root. Into your root center. So your root center is um, all the way uh, physically. It's around physically it's around your Sorry, I was just feeling into some people in the group um, around your, your cervix. And around your perineum. So just let yourself drop into focus. So focus your inner eye into your root and breathe all the way down. Allow yourself to expand, allow your root to expand. Feel the tissues, feel that whole area energetically expanding. And then we're gonna anchor that with and into Mother Earth, Gaia, the big being of Mother Earth that's always there supporting us. She's an expression of the Great Mother as we all are. Oh, and then just letting that anchor in so that you feel a merging of your energies. You're receiving the energy of Mother Earth, the golden light, and your root extending and opening all the way down into the earth, energetically. Beautiful. And now we're gonna open up. So we're gonna leave that open and we're gonna move our awareness to the top of your head, the crown gateway, and open that up to the heavens, the moonlight, and all of the cosmic transmissions that are here to support us in this journey, to support our soul, to support our light, We're just opening up our crown, allowing. So it's not just a visualization. I want you to actually see if you can actually feel it in your cells, feel that light coming in. And if you can't, that's okay. But just be open to actually feeling that in your body. It's like inviting your body to feel, knowing that, the cells 
but there's this visceral intelligence in your body that that is receiving frequencies at all times and so you're just opening up your awareness to that that's right you're opening up your subtle bodies to listen this quality of listening with yourselves listening with the eye with your soul listening and feeling and sensing the different fields of energy. And as you're doing that, letting yourself settle down even more in your body, settling down. And what I normally do in these um, group transmissions is I'm just tuning into the group to the degree that you allow me to on the inner planes. And, and then I'm just going to be kind of channeling what the group needs, what is here for the group in support of the, of the cosmic lights and all of, our, all of the light beings that are here to support us in this transition, in this personal and in this global initiation. So just allow yourself to feel the sacrum in your lower back. That's coming up for the group. So the sacrum in your lower back is, um, if you just think of your lower back and then just drop a little bit into that kind of triangle bone that's in the center of your pelvis and the back side. And even if you don't know physically where it is, it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of tuning into your whole pelvic area, but more on the back side. And letting that open, and just inviting it to open. Inviting that to open. Esoterically, we hold a lot of fear in our sacrum. And so there might be constrictions, contractions. And just breathing into that place. Your breath allows the activation of essence. It's the bridge. Just breathing and allowing. And just noticing, noticing, you know, it's been a tough month. Noticing if there's any emotions there, noticing what you're feeling, allowing yourself to feel. Maybe you haven't been able to truly rest. And it's in the sacrum that we have the, the nerves of the parasympathetic nervous system. And when we're in contraction, we can't really rest. We can't really activate the parasympathetic, which is where we find the, the rest aspect versus the fight or flight aspect of our nervous system. So let's just see if we could actually rest, let go, and move into safety, move into our parasympathetic nervous system. There we go. Kind of like settle. It's like when we say settle down, like that's what we're settling into. We're settling into the pelvic bowl. Our sacrum, our parasympathetic nervous system. And this allows us to access a different dimension 
a field of oneness, of essence. Good. And most of us are connected there. So as that continues to deepen, I want you now to bring your awareness to your heart. Oh, and there's so much in your heart. Because your heart is holding all of the emotions that you've been through, the, the whole range. And so first I want you to realize that your heart, behind your emotional heart, you have this heart that connects with your soul. And I want you to just let that expand, 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 and open. Just invite it to expand. It's truly the heart of the mother. It's truly the heart of spirit of consciousness. And in that heart, you have the ability to hold the pleasant and unpleasant, all the range of emotions that you've been experiencing and that are present for you right in this moment. There you go. And so allow yourselves to really just be with, be with the fear, the sadness, the grief. And it's like letting them be held in the greater container of your spiritual heart of love, it's unconditional love. And so you have this ability to transform. You have this alchemical process to transform the denser vibrations into higher light vibrations. You have the ability and you can access that superpower. It's a superpower of the feminine that we all carry, men and women. But women are really, really um, close to this superpower because we can, we can carry it physically in our bodies when we transform and give birth, whether it's to children or ideas or any, anything in form. So let yourself feel the feelings. And you can just choose one for the sake of this process right now. Whatever is the loudest. And just allow yourself to really embrace it, hold it. And surrender it. And bringing one hand to your heart, the right hand to your heart, and the left hand to your sacral area right below your belly button, that whole pelvic cavity, your womb, your sacral womb. Surrender whatever's in your heart to the sacral womb, to the deep essence of your being. to the divine, to the divine nature within you. Let yourself surrender it, feel it, breathe it, be with it. If there's emotions, let yourself, let yourself cry. Crying is one of those other superpowers that we have. Yeah. 
that metabolizes the denser emotions, metabolizes the grief, the fear, the disappointment. Let yourself feel the not knowing. The not knowing is the bridge. You have to be willing to go into that not knowing because your mind doesn't know. It doesn't know this place of soul. The soul holds all potential. So see them surrendering and not knowing. which allows you to land in a new level of consciousness and a new awareness. Using your breath To also alchemize, metabolize, digest. Letting yourself move into stillness, the stillness of your being. And just noticing, noticing, witnessing what's moving through you and what's opening, what's opening. And you may have to do this process a few times a day. It's suggested in the morning and in the evening, especially in the evening. This is a process of transformation. And letting, letting that emotion, the denser feelings literally dissolve as you feel them, as you bring them to the forefront, as you become present with them, right? And, and just being, just being with it, breathing, allowing, surrendering. Breathing, allowing, surrendering. And as that continues to metabolize, I want you to allow your heart to open up even more and invite invite even more of the qualities within your essence of unconditional love, peace, safety. And as you're calling these qualities in, you can feel them descending from the cosmos, right? Feel them descending, the qualities of Rahman, Rahim, Salam, Abba, of Wakil, uh, the trust. Of high life, your life force. Truth. 
safety. This is where you find your safety. And as you feel that descending, allow yourself your own qualities and your essence and the, and the essence of your soul to start to expand because you carry, you are these qualities. You carry this light. You're able to access this dimension within your own being. And so, yes, they descend but then they activate and then you can feel that light in your own being expanding 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 and then as you feel that light expanding within you you know that that is your true essence and that is your truth. And the denser emotions are places that have been unresolved that are seeking to come into union with your truth, with this true spiritual dimension, with your sacred nature with the love. So the fear is seeking love. The grief is seeking love. The disappointment is seeking love. And this is where you can come into your sovereignty by opening up and accessing this dimension within yourself. And this is the treasure within you. This is your true nature. And then as we complete this process for today, I want you to bring both hands to your heart and just hold in your heart the inquiry of in this incubation time, in this deep transformation time that we all have right now. For some of us, it's been forced upon us. However, there's a jewel in that. You know, that's the outside story, but there's a jewel. And the jewel is, it's a, it's a time for us to go into deep retreat. And the inquiry is, what, how do we want to come back out? of our retreat time, of our cave, out into the world, because it's not business as usual. We are capable of holding a light frequency of love. We are capable of committing on a deeper level to love, to this feminine principle that is arising through us. And so what does that look like for you? What are your hopes and dreams that perhaps have been unfulfilled till now? Maybe because of fear, maybe because of timing. We don't know. However, can we commit to those greater hopes and dreams, to stepping out in that way. And this is an inquiry for 
exploration and you can commit to the next three days tuning into this in the mornings or in the evening. And just seeing what, what the wisdom is, what the wisdom that arises from your essence around this inquiry. It's not something for your mind to answer, but for you to feel it from the deep recesses of your soul. And you might be surprised. You might be surprised at the answer. And are you willing to take that risk? To step into that. To step into your brilliance. Your greatest um, I don't even have words for what I'm feeling. It's like, it's like your greatest expression of the divine. What you truly are yearning for. Hmm. And so, I want to um, just finish this process. I know a lot of you are still, things are moving, things are coming up. You'll have the recording and you can do this process again, or you can do it on your own. It's already been ignited. But I want to bow in gratitude to this great awakening that's happening. I want us to be able to see the underlying power of change that is here for each and every one of us to step into. And I want us to be grateful for, for that, for that opportunity that whether we know it or not, that we've, um, you know, we've come into this, this incarnation and we've asked for this walking. We've asked to be here, be here right now. And it's a great evolution of our soul. And so can't we be, can we be in the gratitude for that? And can we be in the gratitude for everything, everything, and I know it's a tall order, but everything that has gotten us to this place, including all the stories that are unpleasant, all the things that we have perceived as traumas, because everything has, has brought us to this place, everything that's that's happened to us, through us. And so maybe there's some room there for us to still embrace that and that's, and that's all good. And can we be in gratitude also for our ancestors, for all of the women that have come before us? all of the women and for what they have taught us consciously and unconsciously. And Libra with ruling Venus is the sign of the feminine, of the women gathering socially. So here we're gathering our hearts and can we be, can we bring in the ancestors and be in gratitude and celebrate them? And they're all here celebrating us because we are at this choice point. 
on the planet at this time. And they're here supporting us. No pressure. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to stop the recording.